So if you're looking at your introduction to pH paper, um, a couple facts we need before we start is, again, that we have this ion product constant for water. So all of our acid-base solutions, if I take the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide, I will always get 10 to the negative 14 molarity squared. All right, in pure neutral water, that means the concentration of hydronium and the concentration of hydroxide are the same. They would both be 10 to the negative 7. And so that's how we end up with the 10 to the negative 14 when you multiply them together. The other fact that we'll be using quite often is listed right here. When you take the pH of a solution plus the pOH of the solution, you're always going to get this magical number of 14. So we'll be referring to some of that stuff as we go here. But first off, just a refresher, um, you might remember, but when you're looking at the pH of a solution, it goes from 0 to 14. If it, the pH is right in the middle at 7, that would be a neutral solution, like pure water. Anything greater than 7 is basic, less than 7 is acidic. The farther away from neutral you get, the stronger the acid or base. So, you know, when we go from 7, a strong base would have a pH of 14, like drain cleaner. Whereas, just past 7, baking soda has a pH around 8, which we use to cook with, and that would be a weak base. A strong acid with a pH of 0 or 1, like battery acid, Whereas, like, the coffee I drink usually has a pH of about 5.5. That's a weak acid. So that's how we can use this pH scale to talk about acids and bases. But right now, let's just focus on how we calculate them. Well, baby steps, we have this nice little chart that we can work with. And you see that the first row is filled in for us. All right. Um, <coughs> When I have a concentration of hydronium, that links up with pH. Concentration of hydroxide links up with pOH. And you can kind of see that the exponents and the pH and pOH are working together. So when my hydronium concentration is 10 to the negative fifth molar, my pH is 5. My concentration of hydroxide is 10 to the negative ninth molar, my pOH is 9. Anytime I want to know what type of solution I have, that's when we refer to the pH. So since the pH is 5, that's in this range. It is acidic. All right, so let's look at the next one together. I have a solution with hydronium concentration of 10 to the negative 11 molar. So my pH is 11. Since my pH is 11, and I know pH plus pOH always equals 14, my pOH has to be 3. Since my pOH is 3, my concentration of hydroxide is 10 to the negative 3 molar. What type of solution? pH is 11. That's above 7. Basic. The next row there pH of 7, pOH is 7. Both of these concentrations are 10 to the negative 7. That's a neutral solution. That's the one we were just talking about. So pause the video, take two seconds, and see if you can complete the last rows. So hopefully you got those answers for those last two rows. Now it would be great if this was as complicated as the topic got, but it's not. And if you look at that next little bullet under the chart, how would we find the pH if the solution had a concentration of hydronium of 2.74 times 10 to the negative 4? Well, that's not an exact perfect whole number concentration or pH, so we're going to have to use the power of the logarithm. The logarithm function takes those icky concentration numbers and changes them to a pH between 0 and 14. Each pH jump is a power of 10 concentration-wise. So while the pH scale doesn't seem that all impressive going from 0 to 14, that's 14 powers of 10. 6 powers of 10 is a million. 9 powers of 10 is a billion. 12 powers of 10 is a trillion. So 
0 to 14, 14 powers of 10, that's 100 trillion when it comes to the concentration changes. That's quite impressive. So we have a ton of different answers, numbers, mathematical, mathematically that we can have for the concentrations within that scale. So that's why we have to use the log. What we're going to look at here, you want to check your calculator. Turn it on, push the log button. If you see the word log, then you're going to follow the graphing instructions. So if you have a graphing calculator, the graphing instructions. If you hit log and see error or E or something else, then you're going to want to follow the regular instructions. So these are the instructions you want to use to type into the uh, calculator. I'll go through an example with one of these, but take pause for a moment and write that down where it says write your calculator instructions here. So now these are the types of questions we want to look at. Let me split the screen for us here. A little tough to see here, but you have this in front of you. So the question says, what is the pH of a solution if the hydronium concentration is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 2 molar? So if you want to find the pH, we've got to type that into our calculator. So for a graphing calculator, first you're going to type in the negative sign. Then you're going to push the log. And then that hashtag, the number there, you want to type in 3.5. Then you'll hit second comma, so you'll see the capital E show up, and then the negative exponent, negative 2, and hit enter. And you should see a number like 1.45 something. But always trying to use our sig fig friends, I just need to answer 1.5. And pHs are not labeled. If I'm a regular calculator user, then I just have to type it in a little differently. I have to type in the 3.5, then hit the EE or EXP key, depending on your calculator. And then negative 2 log. Now your calculator is going to show a negative 1.45 something. But our pHs are always between 0 and 14, so you just ignore the negative sign. Looking at the second question, what's the pOH of a solution if the hydroxide concentration is 9.8 times 10 to the negative 11 molar? Same process. Follow the same instructions, except this time the number that you're going to use is 9.8. So when you type that in, this time your calculator should give you an answer of around 10. All right. Now the next question says, what's the pH of a solution if pOH is 12.4? We don't need to use the log for this because we have our fantastic fact. pH plus pOH is always 14. So if pH plus pOH is always 14, if the pOH is 12.4, the pH is going to be 1.6, so it adds up to 14. So how are we going to use this? Well, if you turn your introduction paper over, here are three um, solutions. And the question says, tell what type of solution you have from the following descriptions. And you're going to want to answer, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? All right. So you always have to find the pH to do this. There's three ways that I can have you accomplish this. If I give you the hydronium concentration, then that means you take the negative log of that number. If I give you pOH, then that means you have 14 minus that. If I give you hydroxide, then you have to do both things. First, we take the negative log, and then you're going to have to subtract from 14. So pause the video and see if you can get these answers. So again, the first way that I can show this to you, if I give you the hydronium, you take the negative log of that number, you should have gotten 8.6, and that's a basic solution. The second way, if I give you the pOH, you just subtract. 14 minus 12 is 2, that's acidic. Now when I give you hydroxide and you take the negative log of that, you get pOH. 
because hydroxide and POH go together. So the negative log of that is 5.5. So I have to subtract that from 14 to get 8.5, and that's a basic solution. So again, those three ways, that's the important stuff when, as far as figuring out what type of solution you have. Now the other thing we can do is do the reverse. If I give you the pH or pOH, you can tell me what the concentrations are. If the solution concentration is 10 to the negative 5 for hydronium, I'm sorry, if the, if the solution pH is 5, the concentration is 10 to the minus 5. Well, as it says there, what if the pH is 8.44? Well, the hydronium concentration, we have to use the reverse log. And you can see here, if you're trying to find the hydronium concentration, it's 10 to the negative pH. If you're trying to find hydroxide, it's 10 to the negative pOH. Take a moment and write down your calculator instructions on how we're going to do these problems. All right, so looking at these last two practice problems, says, what is the hydronium concentration of a solution that has a pH of 2.2? Well, you're correct. As you see here, the hydronium concentration is 10 to the negative pH, 10 to the negative 2.2. But that's not OK mathematically. We have to use the, the reverse log, anti-log, second log, to get the answer. And so if you're using a graphing calculator, you hit second log, a 10 appears. You type in negative 2.2 and hit enter. If you're using a regular calculator, type in 2.2, then the negative sign, then second log. And either way you do this, sorry, hold on, you should get the answer of 0 0.0063 molar or if you want to change it to scientific notation, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Again, since I only gave you 2.2 for the pH, I only need the 6 and the 3. Now the second one there, what's the hydronium concentration for a solution that has a pOH of 4.4? Okay, it says careful there, because if I want to find the hydronium concentration, as we saw, that is 10 to the negative pH. Hydronium and pH go together. So since I gave you pOH, you have to remember, aha, the pH is 9.6, because they have to add up to 14. So the concentration is 10 to the negative 9.6. And now we have to do the second log with your calculator, and you should get an answer of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 10th molar. And yes, you could write 2.5 E negative 10. That's acceptable as well. Now remember, for the test and quiz, you're going to be allowed to use calculator instructions. I gave you that half sheet of, of paper that you can write the calculator instructions on. But you should also include sample problems. Okay. Again, I told you these were the three ways that I could ask you to calculate pH. So you might want to put those three sample problems with the pH calculator instructions. And if you're asked to calculate hydronium concentration with the second log, you might want to put these sample problems with your second log instructions. All right. Hope this helps. Later.